So this tutorial is going to be a little nerdier, a little more in-depth, and maybe more advanced than some of the easier techniques with the Thrash Tones template. But I want to show you how to get this kind of effect. So let me just start by actually closing this. And let's just open that fresh Thrash Tones file. And this is kind of how the template looks when you first open it. And what we want to do first is, let's go into Illustrator. I've just got this Thrash Tones type. Copy it and then go back into the Thrash Tone template. There's two modes in the Thrash Tone template. There's the logo mode, and if you turn off the two logo mode layers, there's a photo mode. So you can apply halftone textures to your photos, and in the logo mode, it'll apply halftone textures to your drop shadows. But we actually were you know, kind of using a logo here, but we want to use it in photo mode. So let's go in here and there's some palm trees in there and we'll just turn that off and let's paste in that logo as pixels. And that red color is automatically applied to it. And the one thing you'll notice is if you just have straight black and white art, there actually won't be any halftones applied to it. And the reason is, is because we need some grayscale in there. So there's a few things we can do. Let me just um, let me just turn this color back to black first of all. And what I'll do is let me blur out just to give you an example. Let me blur out the art in this thrash tones type. So let's go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And the more I blur it, the more it's soft around the edges, and you'll start to see those halftone. Now, if I turn off the halftone effects, you'll see it's just, you know, it's just a blurred edge. And where that blurring occurs is where you get the halftones. So you could do it that way. You know, if I undo that blurring, I could also double click on my levels. We can turn that black art to gray and that will also apply a halftone effect, but it's not just to the edge. It's because that art is now gray. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, anyway, back to the effect we were trying to get. So um, let me kind of get those levels back to normal here. And let's go back into Illustrator where we have this type. And what we want to do is let's just keep a copy of this, but I'm going to option drag a copy up and then I'm going to option drag a copy to the left. Now let's make sure to send this copy to the back and with color, I'm just going to turn that one white and this top one, I'm going to turn it to like, say like a 50% gray. So what we want to do now is grab our blend tool, click on one, click on the other, and let me hide that selection. It's still selected and let's double click on the blend tool here. And with our spacing, let's specify quite a few steps. Let's say 200. And that'll create more or less kind of a, a blended motion blur um, in Illustrator. And now what I want to do is let's copy that, go back into Photoshop. And we have our halftone effects turned off. So um, I'm just going to paste it in there as pixels, click OK and I'm going to scale it down just a tad. And let's get our black type and kind of position it right over the top of that, kind of in the right place. And here's where it gets cool. So I want to turn back on these halftone effects and I'm going to do that by just clicking on this eyeball icon. The thing with these halftones is I like to go really oversized sometimes. Let's go down to these horizontal lines, turn that on, and to get an effect like the one I just showed you with the crow, we want to make this scale really big. So I think that's starting to look pretty cool. Um, we could go even bigger. Click OK. The next thing I want to do is I want to get a little separation between these lines and the type. So again, you know, if we turn off the halftone effect, that's kind of how it looks. Let's go back 
to this layer with the black type and let's put a layer effect on it layer layer style outer glow so we're going to put kind of like a little white border around it and i think that's probably going to work so let's click ok let's turn our halftone effect back on and now we have kind of a separation around the type so a lot of good things you can do with this template and a lot of it's just about experimenting with blurs and experimenting with your levels you know okay what given that one more thing we could do is we could actually blur out this um, this top layer here let me turn off the halftone effect just to show you that so filter blur gaussian blur and so i'm going to do that let me just cancel it turn back on the halftone effect and go filter blur gaussian blur and you can kind of adjust it in real time which is the advantage of this template because if you if you were to try to apply halftones straight out of photoshop you know you can only see the effect as you're applying it and if you don't like it you have to undo it and adjust uh, this way we can kind of play with it as we go and i think that looks pretty cool so there you go